Hey guys, my name is Jessica Likewise, and I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services. I'm passionate about helping families just like yours who have children with autism to have a better understanding of how to help their child and navigate this crazy journey that you're on. So I've been working with children with autism as an ABA therapist for more than 11 years, and I founded my company, Hope Education Services, to make treatment available online for kids all over the world. So I create these videos, and this is part of a very special series called ABA terms defined, where I'm sharing the definitions of these terms that your ABA therapists are probably throwing out there every day that as a parent, you may want to understand and may not understand. So today we're going to be talking about when we're going to be defining the term automatic behavior. Now that sounds a little weird, right? So in ABA, we have two types of behaviors. There's social behaviors and there's automatic behaviors. So an automatic behavior is a behavior that doesn't involve another person. So it's essentially anything that anyone does by themselves. So if I am home in my house by myself and I'm hungry, so I go to the microwave and I put some food in and I heat it up, that's an automatic behavior because it's nothing to do with anybody else. Now, if I were to have asked someone to give me food, well, that would be a social behavior. So the automatic, again, it's not involving anyone else. So if I tie my shoe and I am you know, in my house and by myself, I'm an adult, I tie my shoe, or even if I'm out, in, it doesn't matter if anyone else is around, right? Typically as adults, you're not asking anyone to tie your shoe, you're just tying your shoe by yourself, hopefully. So that would be an automatic behavior. And if the music is too loud and I'm driving in my car and I turn the music down, that is an automatic behavior. If I'm a passenger in a car and I ask the driver to turn the music down, it's a social behavior. So oftentimes though, when it refers to kids with autism, when ABA therapists are using the term automatic behavior, they're actually referring to self-stimulatory behaviors. Although, like I just said, it's not the only thing that that refers to. So that could be anything like clapping your hands, arm um, rocking back and forth, jumping up and down, lining things up, anything that a child intrinsically does by themselves that doesn't involve another person. So the idea is that they're accessing the reinforcer by themselves. So that may be a little confusing. So in ABA, there's always three parts of a behavior. There's the antecedent, the behavior, and then the consequence. So in the, in, with an automatic behavior, the antecedent is always an intrinsic desire for either to gain something or to take something away. So with automatic behaviors, there's automatic positive behaviors and automatic negative behaviors. So in the event that I were to want to turn the radio off, that would be an automatic negative behavior because the music is going away and that's what's reinforcing my behavior, my turning down the music, the music being turned off makes me essentially happy, right? That's why I, I did it. And then if automatic positive behavior would be if I turn the radio on, then the music Music going on would then be the reinforcer for that behavior. So when it comes to figuring out whether a stimulatory behavior, and this is where, again, automatic behaviors mostly come in when working with kids with autism, whether it's a self-stimming behavior, it's hard to know whether it's an automatic positive behavior or an automatic negative behavior. Now, in ABA, we have what's called a private event, which means we can't actually see it, and since we can't see it, we can't really explain the function of the behavior. ABA is really about observing behavior and figuring out why people are doing things. Well, if you can't figure out what happened before the behavior, right? We usually look at the antecedent to figure out why someone's gauging in behavior, what happened before the behavior. That gives us all the information we need. Since that's an intrinsic desire within somebody, we can't actually observe that. So we often don't know. Now you would always know if you're doing the behavior and sometimes it's obvious. It's Obviously, well, obviously, that's an automatic negative behavior that would totally make sense. But in the event someone is doing something like hitting their head on a table, I don't know if they have a headache and you know they're trying to make their head go, headache go away. I don't know if. I mean, for some reason, they find that a pleasurable sensation. Sometimes kids with autism, they have different sensory experiences with things that may differ from your eye, or even someone is flapping their arms, right? I don't know if they're trying to calm themselves down by doing that. I don't know if they're doing it just because they, they like the way it feels. It can be hard to figure out. So you can't always predict or can't always tell whether something's in automatic 
positive or automatic negative behavior. But the key thing I want you to know and walk away from watching this video is an automatic behavior is essentially anything that anyone does that doesn't involve another person giving them access to the reinforcer. So I really hope this video was helpful. Um, if, you, if it is, I'd love for you to connect with me on YouTube, subscribe to this channel. I put tons of videos out just like this one, just for you. Um, it's parenttrainingvideos.com. That's where you can find my channel. If this is your first time finding this video. Now, I also just want to let you know, I love to answer your questions. I make, sometimes I'm making videos in this, like this particular um, video is part of this series where I'm talking about all the different ABA terms, but sometimes I make questions or and make videos just to answer parent questions. If you chat a question in on this YouTube video in the comments section, I read and respond to all the comments and I promise you I will make a video for you to get your question answered. So I hope that you enjoy this. I hope to connect with you again. If you are interested in more free content, I want you to head over to my webpage. It's hopeeducationservices.com. Under the section free resources. I have four ebooks and I'd love to just give you one for free and to connect with you every week on my weekly newsletter when I send out videos like this and all sorts of different blog posts with tips and tricks on how to help your child. So I hope you make it an amazing week and I hope to talk to you again soon.